chasing God, pursuing the Lord, and really even worship. All of those things get a feminine rap. How many families is it out there that the, that the mom is the spiritual head of the household? Yeah. yeah. Which, like, good for you. Yeah, please praise keep, God. Please keep going. Keep leading. But, like, at some point, your man's got to step up and take that role. Well, this might be a super dude thing to say, but it. you'd be baptized by the Holy Spirit, right. and now yeah. you have the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, and now that lives inside of you. Yeah. yeah. And you're just going to hang out at home all day. Dude, I got convicted. Saying. Jesus was meek, not weak. Yes. Like, he had the strength to do something about it, right. but he refrained. You show emotional strength when you choose to be meek. Oftentimes, the, the biggest, loudest, you know, get in your face kind of guys are generally emotionally the weakest men around uh -huh. right. because they are 100% acting out of insecurity, trying to no longer appear weak. Let's be real. And like, I'm about, I'm about to get a little PG-13, just so uh, just- Oh yeah. You want your wife to be sexually attracted to you? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh my like, God. Like seriously. There, I, I, for the right woman, mm -hmm. right. for a woman of God, there right. is nothing more attractive yeah. than... Hey, welcome to the No Counterfeit <laughs> Podcast. I am so excited for this episode because I not only have one guest, I not only have two guests, I have three <laughs> guests today on the podcast, all of which are my brothers. And I am so excited to bring you this episode, each one better than the last. And uh, I'm just introducing them. This right here to my left, your right, is Carson Valor Clark. He is my baby brother. Baby brother. Um, the hand of the Lord is all, all over him and excited for you to get to hear some of his wisdom. Shifting to another camera, bam. We've got Weston Clark in the I Love My Wife shirt. I do. Weston Dean Clark, incredible man of God and uh, excited. Weston is the youth pastor at Celebration Church, yes, um, crushing it. The youth group is growing like never before and uh, is an amazing dad to two little beautiful boys and very excited. Next to him is Braden Jesse Jowers. Come on. I'm doing a middle name thing today, I guess. <laughs> All right, yeah. um, Braden Jesse Jowers. He is my brother, not in law, in love. My brother in love. He's my brother. And I married my sister, Lyndon. He is uh, incredible. I couldn't have handpicked uh, a better helpmate for her. But today, I wanted to be able to do a podcast with my brothers. And really quickly, just to honestly just get right into it, I know we'll probably joke around and stuff as we go. <laughs> but real quickly, I wanted to talk about and just kind of set the pace, set the trajectory of the fact that so often chasing God pursuing the Lord, um, and really even worship, um, whether that looks like a life of worship, which is obviously what worship should be, but also even the literal moment in our service we would call worship, mm -hmm. right. um, and expressing yourself in that moment, all of those things get a feminine rap. Like yeah. there is this idea. And I think it, even if it's not something somebody would overtly say, it's just this thing that creeps in and acts like that's for the ladies going full out, really um, being emotional, um, you know, really expressing yourself. Right. Um, sadly, we can kind of begin to think that that's a woman's thing in all areas of life. Mm -hmm. But if there's any area where it definitely should be led by the men and it is a manly thing to do, it should be when it involves the Lord. Right. And so today Absolutely. I just really want us to talk and really kind of debunk that myth. Um, mm -hmm. And if it's, even if it's not a known myth, I think it's still something so many guys can relate to. Yeah. It can feel mm -hmm. cringe right. for so many guys yeah. to like raise their hands in worship, <laughs> to get on their knees, to lay flat on their face before the Lord, to um, lead in a place of like prayer, um, not only at church, but in their home. And right. so I kind of have this just ax to grind against mm -hmm. this idea yeah. that pursuing the Lord and being expressive mm -hmm. towards the Lord is a feminine thing. Honestly, I, I wanted to just, this was one of the things I really came into this podcast wanting to hit on yeah. because there is one of us amongst the rest of us who I think does this the best and it's because it's his literal <laughs> profession. Right. Braden Jowers. Braden. Literally. He goes all I, out. I, goes all out. But listen, he is a dancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there is not a more manly man who I have ever seen dance before the Lord. So often like, when guys are the dancers at a church or they are involved in dance, they kind of have like, they fit this one mold. Like yeah, typically yeah. they fit this one vibe yeah. of kind of guy. 
Braden, and you literally shatter shatter it. that mold. Like yeah. uh, you can bench more than all of us. Okay, maybe not Weston. No, he's got me. Okay, cool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we got some honesty on this podcast. Yeah, no um, counterfeit. No counterfeit. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Weston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, you lifts, I got him on him. But for sure, maybe not bench. Express. Maybe no, not bench. He's got me. There you 100%. go. Come on, I love the humility. But Braden, one of like I honestly even felt like while we were here and we were leading YA. I felt like you were this secret weapon that I had <laughs> that when I felt like the room needed a shift, I would just come and find you and I'd say, mm-hmm. get up there and go for it. Like, yeah. Um, and yeah, I love it. Like, so you will literally get on the stage. Yeah. You will like, and not in like, I'm not talking break dance or like there, you don't put out the cardboard and break back flips or anything. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm talking like, you if you to I'm talking <laughs> about like almost, if I can say this, an angelic type mm. of thing like Agreed. this like it's almost got this angelic quality right. yeah. flow and spiritual flow absolutely that, that you just don't see and there's something about whenever he would get up there and just you see this 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 manly dude get up there and just go for it mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. no care right not at all and in not a stereotypical just, manly way no 100 right 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 but it like, just brings the throne room it just opens the gates there is a layer like anything yeah. else you mm-hmm. could see 50 women doing it and it and wouldn't there's nothing shift wrong with the room. It's, it's, it's still great. Yeah, it and wouldn't that's shift the room, though. That's amazing. It's not, it's not a shift. No. But there's something about just no holds bar, getting up there and just giving it whenever he would just give it his all yeah. to the Lord, not caring. And it's just like, oh, dude, it's brought me to my knees multiple times. For like, real. Just being yeah. no. like, it was just like, also, it's just like the heaviness in the room. Like mm-hmm. you could just, the Dissipates. spirit of God hits the room so hard that I can't, I literally can't stand. No, yeah. for real. Like it. It is, and I, I know I'm going to let you talk, Braden, because no, obviously, like, we're teaming you up here. We're hiking you Thank up. Thank y'all. Keep going. Honestly, don't hike. You're welcome. You're like, you're like, you're like, you're like Take your time. stop, stop, stop. Um, <laughs> I think Carson should talk more <laughs> about this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I genuinely feel like it really is, as Weston was saying, it is a room shifter. Like, mm-hmm. oh, there's some, sure. and it's not that pe- people are watching you, but they are seeing, like, the Lord mm, yeah. on it. And so I felt like if we just went there, like we'd be going yeah. off the deep end quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so Brayden, like you obviously have to make the middle choice of like, Hey, I know people could judge me for this. I know yeah. people could look weird at me for this. They could be like, yo, what's up with, what's up with that? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I've never seen you hold back one time. Can you kind of like go into a little bit of that? Like when you dance? For yeah. The Lord? Yeah. Well, so on this topic, what's really interesting about that, like uh, thinking about other men also having, a more external expression of their worship yeah. in service, even if it's not turns and jumps and whatnot, is the enemy does attack me right before. Wow. Almost every time. I mean, I've a hundred percent been set free from that, like falling for it. Yeah. But he does go for it every time. Whenever we step into a moment of worship, I can tell when I start feeling it more is whenever thoughts of, oh, well, you're just going to try to show off or people are going to judge how you dance, like those ideas of just aesthetically what it looks like. Right. They, they do try to like jump in there and keep me from it. And it, without a doubt, every single time I've gone there with it, I've had to just be like, God, this is for you, not myself. 100%. I'm going to quit being like, oh, Braden, Braden, Braden. No, this is for the Lord. I'm going to honor you with it and I just go for it and I'm set free and I'm edified, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. in that moment. And then it blows my mind every time whenever I come off or I settle down after service when people are like, yeah, man, like that broke me. I just was bawling. All these people who I wouldn't expect to at all. And in the moment leading up to it, and I feel like maybe this is something people could relate to, it was just me. All I was thinking about was how I was going to feel doing it or um, mm-hmm. like how negatively, you know, the enemy yes. trying to, yeah, yeah, was yeah. trying to stop me by trying to tell me like how it, I'm not going to gain anything from it. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then especially thinking about most of those times, I don't feel like the Lord is asking me to do it for my own sake. He's asking me to do it for the space, for the other people in there. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. As a, as a sense of worship, but also prayer and like intercession even mm-hmm. for for those who are struggling in that moment well yeah. like think about this there's i mean and this is not even a, a christian thing yeah but body language yeah is yeah. a thing it is you know what i mean and like as we're all singing to the lord or praying mm-hmm. there's something special about when that other language comes in of like the human body moving and flowing in such a way where it's like god even my joints are worshiping you. Yeah. My yeah. ligaments 
are worshiping you. Yeah. There's there there is not just nothing in my soul being held back. There's not a mm-hmm. body part yeah. that is held back. The vulnerability yeah. is there, even whenever you're. It's not uh, maybe in a spiritual setting. Just dance itself yeah. is extremely vulnerable. Yes, because mm-hmm. typically it's based on. It's. A, I mean, it's a visual art. Yeah. So yeah. it's based on what it looks like. Right. And so to be able to to step into like a holy space and really try to be like, no, this is for the Lord. This is like for the spirit realm, like uh-huh. that we're going into. Yeah. This isn't about what you see, but to to let it impact people that way visually is. Yeah, without a doubt. And yeah. at this point, you've done it enough times where you know, hey, it's highly likely people are going to get something out of this. Yeah. But there was a time where it was the first time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and you've obviously danced your whole life. I mean, mm-hmm. you have, you've trained in this. You are literally a professional mm-hmm. at this. It is your profession. Yeah. Um, and so I just think there's something beautiful, um, quite literally just ab- about that. Of, mm-hmm. And it's, it's one thing for somebody to get up there and do like an overtly manly dance where it's like break dancing and like there's a cool element yeah. to it. Yeah. But I love that like what you're doing you, there's nothing about it that's like, hey, Braden's trying to be cool. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm not saying it's not cool, yeah. but I'm saying you don't, the first thought in your mind is not Braden's really just trying to like, like show some, off or impress somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is Braden loves the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, like Braden is feeling something. And I, I even, you can watch your face as you dance. Like mm-hmm. your whole, your face gets involved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, I love that. You yeah. know, he, sometimes he you gotta, it. I'll look at people in church. I'm like, are you are you enjoying being here? Like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, well, you might you might want to let your face know. You know what I mean? Like, right. Face yeah. does not look like it's enjoying being here. Yeah. Your sure. face is involved. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not talking about it in a weird way or a cringe way or anything like that. And I do want to say, if dancing's not your thing, dance for the Lord. Yeah. 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 Bro. But don't dance on a stage for the Lord. Okay. Oh, like 100%. that's what I'm saying. It's like yeah. you can dance, and I think you should. Like there have been times where I have. I have literally forced myself to be like, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dance for you. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds even weird saying it for me because like yeah. I am not Braden Jowers. Um, but God is worthy of that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, he's worthy of the things that I'm really good at. And he's also worthy of just my best effort in an area where I yes. am insufficient. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would say the three of us are insufficient. Oh, oh Braden, yeah. more yeah. than sufficient. More than. But so, we are yeah, very insufficient in the dancing realm. Well, I mean, well, you, you've got the same. I mean, what's what's I've what's got interesting? The of a two by four. <laughs> <laughs> what's interesting is how normal it is to sing for the Lord, right? right whether right. you can sing or not. That's true. You know what I mean? We have the lyrics up on the board so that everybody can follow along. <laughs> That's so. Good. But we. But the only people on stage are the ones who yeah. are can killing lead. it. They're can, not going to put me on there with a the mic. Yeah. But everyone's expected to still sing along. Yeah. Or I mean, at least encouraged. Encouraged for sure. Yeah. Well, on that front, I'm just so glad the Bible says to make a joyful noise and not a skillful noise because I'll, yeah I'd, there you go i'd be toast yeah, yeah. I'd never be able to worship yeah <laughs> but the noises i make are joyful but mm-hmm. never on and they're noises or, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're noises no, yes for sure yeah, yeah. no for sure yeah. pastor krista calls them chanting a chant for the lord hey <laughs> you know um you know the spirit you know cries out with groans yeah. unspeakable <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, true. Um, that's why i started drumming there <laughs> I you don't go have to use my vocal <laughs> and that is, that is an area i feel like we do have like the three of us have some level of skill is musically but yeah. you know as far I don't know as about me <laughs> i feel like you've got rhythm no. you do we'll you do i don't know I feel like you do. Let's there's a, the there's a certain level that comes with just growing up in church. That's true. Yeah, that's You're going to be somewhat musically inclined. Yeah, at least know how to clap on beat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you, I feel okay, like that. Yeah. Maybe, hey, maybe you should all... go there, but the congregation clapping on beat. Yeah. Please, for the love of God, congregation, clap, clap, clap on, on beat. beat. You can clap. Well, clap on beat. Let's clap. If it's going to be out loud. I know. There's so often times you look out, like if I'm worshiping, and I'm, I'm very terrible at this, but I will turn because I will, I will be yeah. moving. Yeah. It's not as graceful as Braden, obviously, but I will be turning and my eyes are open and people are just. Yeah. And I'm like, this song is, first off, this song is bumping. Okay. Yeah, this is a banger. Mm-hmm. This is a banger. This is a worship banger. Mm-hmm. How yeah. are you not at least clapping your hands? Cause you're just going to stare. Yeah. Just straight forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and I think, 100%. I think, I think so often, I think people want to move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they yeah. want to move around. They want to put their hands up. They want to cry. They want to maybe hug somebody. Like, yeah. I mean, they want to sing. They want to chant, whatever. And they hold themselves back because of just whatever idea they've been it's been implanted in their brain. Fear. And when you think about it, man, like, what would you do if the Lord was in the room? Mm-hmm. And you genuinely were feeling this way. He knows your heart. He knows what you're wanting to do. Right. 
you're holding yourself back. Yeah. yeah. For right. what reason? Well, think about this. And I, I heard this recently. Um, I just thought this was so good. It helped me even like it provoked me, encouraged me and convicted me of like, who is the best basketball player in the NBA right now? I know it's debatable, but I think by and, la- la- by and large, people James. would say it is LeBron James. Right. right. King yeah. James is the best basketball player in the NBA right, right yeah. now. Okay. So why aren't the Lakers the best team? Right. No. They have sure. the best player yeah. in the yeah. whole league. Right. But they're not the best team. No. Not it's because the team will move forward based on the entirety of that yeah. team. Right. Right. Yeah. The effort of the whole team. You can have the absolute best player, but that does not automatically mean you're going to win the championship. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And, that, and that's what I'm trying to say. What if we looked at a church service that way? You can have wow. the best worship team, but right. if the, everyone in the room Right. isn't trying to give God the their best praise. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And like for real going there, the room can hinder what the Lord wants to do, even though they've got a dynamic powerhouse worship team on that stage. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It really is the collective body of Christ doing, and again, I'm not trying to act like it's impossible to have a good church service yeah, if one true. guy's just standing there stone cold. Um, but, yeah. and at the same time, I do feel led to say this, is, you know, it's First Samuel 16 is when David is anointed as king. Mm. And before that, Samuel wanted to anoint one of the other brothers. He wanted to anoint Eliab because he, mm-hmm. because he looked good, right? right. And then God has to rebuke Samuel <laughs> yeah, and say, right. hey, yeah. man looks at the outward, right. but God looks on the heart. Mm-hmm. So ho- reserve your oil for the one I have, I've seen the inner workings of. Yeah. Yeah. And I nev- I'll never forget as a preacher, it is so easy to be preaching and look at the room and look at people's faces and try to judge whether or not this sermon is hitting or mm-hmm. this sermon is relevant or you should have preached this sermon right. based on how people are interacting. And it, it can be easy to be hindered by a yeah. room that isn't mm-hmm. shouting you down and amening and all that stuff. Right. And I remember when the Lord had to really rebuke me on this. Um, I won't say who it was because like, I don't need like some of y'all are too immature to, for to handle me saying who it was and not still like vibe with this pod. But um, there was a pastor preaching mm-hmm. um, and um, I remember yeah. I was I follow him and a clip of his came up and it was old. And I start watching it and I was like, wait a second. I was in the room when mm-hmm. he preached this oh, sermon, wow. like this exact sermon, like I'm in yeah. that room. Yeah. And so like literally it's a four minute clip he posted from it and I start watching. And sure enough, the cam- I didn't know this. The camera panned on me and my friends in this massive auditorium at this conference. Mm-hmm. And I saw myself, and a man in that moment, the pastor is preaching his face off. I mean, like he is dropping it. Like it's mm-hmm. incredible stuff. And I remember thinking, oh, this was such a good part. Like I got so much out of this. The camera pants to me and I'm going like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember yeah, yeah, being yeah, I felt, in my body yeah. thinking, wow, this is incredible. Oh yeah. my gosh, what a revelation. Yeah. But if you just saw that video, you'd think yeah. that dude, is yeah. getting nothing. Wow, the whole, and the Holy Ghost, I really think he <laughs> brought no, that all about. That's so cool. So that I would get convicted of like, hey, if you didn't look like you were getting anything out of blank pastor sermon, um, who are you to judge the faces when you are preaching? Because had that man saw your face, he'd have thought this sermon is falling flat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the Lord rebuked me. So we're not trying to say that If we look around and you're not getting into the service or something like that, or you're not worshiping the Lord in the way we are worshiping the Lord, then we automatically know what you're about, or we automatically know where you're at. There have been people who you would never guess were getting ministered to, who were being ministered to deeply. Uh Um, But in that same breath, I think that if you are going to be the man of God that God has called you to be, you need to push yourself in how you express your love for the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like, I think we ought to be pushed in that. When I remember you sharing that story at school of ministry once. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so it's something that's conscious in my thought, my mind, whenever I'm watching somebody preach and how, like, especially if I'm in the front row or something. Oh yeah. And like, you look over, I'm like, man, I like just to honor you and to help you out. I like want to look interesting. I, well, I want to, I want to like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to externally like, uh, show how I'm actually feeling inside, yeah. you know, let your face know you so like I, it. Yeah. That's why I try to be so vocal. Like if yeah. I'm really like feeling like if I'm really getting, not feeling someone's sermon, but if I'm really getting something yeah. like, and God is like really ministering to me through somebody, I've gotten, I finally gotten to the point within the last few years of being a lot more vocal. Otherwise I a hundred percent will be getting just absolutely wrecked Yeah, and be 
and nobody will know it. Dude, you wouldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, that dude's asleep with his eyes open. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's 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 interesting about that, and I've thought about this before, is how <laughs> sometimes it's like on the inside, I'm feeling a certain way. Yeah. It doesn't look like it on the outside. So I decide to start trying to show it on the outside. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm not feeling a certain way on the inside. And then I try to start showing it on the outside and it kind of reveals itself. Like it cultivates that. Yeah. So like in moments of worship, maybe maybe I'm feeling super in it and I, I am just kind of having a head down, arms yeah. down, just like praying, yeah. trying to be peaceful moment. Um, and I'm so in it. But then sometimes I'm not feeling it and kind of jumping up and down and raising my hands to the Lord or taking a knee then kind of cultivates that heart of worship in that moment. Like it yeah. helps it. So sometimes it's like one becomes before the other. Well, and then but both are great. Sometimes people will oh, go, absolutely. But, it, but, but that doesn't feel genuine. Yeah. Sometimes when the right thing hey. doesn't feel genuine, you have to go, well, it should feel genuine. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to do it. There's so a lot of things that don't yeah. feel like great. Like, or... I don't care that it doesn't feel genuine right now. Like what happens when kindness doesn't feel genuine? Right. You just, you, do you get a pass? Kindness. Do you get a free yeah. pass? Like, well, being kind to that guy didn't feel genuine. Right. So like, no, you're still yeah. held to a right. standard. No, certainly. Or it's like, okay, right. the oh, yeah. truth kindness. is, the truth is I didn't want to go to work this morning. Right. Right. But it would be a great idea for me to go to work this morning. So I should go anyway. Like, hey, I'm right. not genuinely here, boss. So I'm going to need to take the day off. That's yeah, inauthentic right. of you to, yeah. to actually you, go. You will never get Makes promoted. No if you, no. like, I'm not trying to sound. <laughs> We're like, not working for things. Uh, yeah, but... I'm not. But like, think about this. Like, you'll never be entrusted with more in the kingdom of God. Yeah. If sometimes you're not willing to do things that don't feel genuine in the moment, but you know, should feel genuine. Right. Yeah. Right. And I what, feel like that's yeah. such a prominent thing in today's culture Yeah, is just the, that you have to feel absolutely 100% in something yeah. before right. you do it. And that's just such a load of crap. I mean, yeah, it's, sure. it's deceiving. It can be deceiving even to yourself. Laziness. Right. And it's just like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to call it like slothfulness. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, for sure. what does it look like to discipline yourself for godliness? And that's right. the whole point. Discipline. It. it is the discipline yeah. behind it. But like oftentimes, like you were saying, taking a physical presence, like first, maybe. Posture. Yeah. Thank you. Posture. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Taking a physical posture almost like jump starts my heart to be uh -huh. in the same oh, 100%. posture. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many times where my heart's not in it because my brain won't allow it. Because right. Like the stresses of the day, you know, I've been up since four. I have two kids. I do work two jobs. It's like, it's yeah, a lot of stress. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. And so- and being on staff at the church, you oftentimes don't get a lot of opportunity to be just lost in worship. Or like, yeah, because minister you do a hundred percent because yeah. you do have so many other things on your mind. You know, is the toilet paper still stocked? You know, is kids church still running good and stuff yeah. like that? So whenever you do have an opportunity to, yeah, I do have a little bit of a harder time shutting my brain off and just allowing that moment to just go for it. You yeah, know? and so I do have to take purposefully have to take a physical posture and then it becomes authentic and yeah. it becomes legit. And then my physical posture just gets even more, yeah. you know, well, it goes some, to the next level. Something I've like uh, really picked up from dad was he was telling us that cause his brain, whenever he's up here is all over the place. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and he, whenever he's in worship, you know, before he goes up to preach that he purposefully yeah. miss sings the song. He doesn't he sing the, the wrong song. He sings his own words. Yeah, yeah, he sings his own words. So that way his mind stays on the Lord. The Lord. It's rather than thinking about what's going on in kids' oh, church yeah. or nursery yeah. or you, coffee if, if you, or anything how, like if that. If you because, sing Waymaker a hundred times, you can be going, Waymaker, miracle right, worker. In your brain. But you can be thinking, what, what's happening at kids' church? Man, I hope, like, man, that person's yeah. a little off. Like, what was my next point? Like, mm -hmm. man, I wonder what we're going to have for lunch. You know, but your lips are all. Waymaker, miracle yeah, right, worker, keeper, right. and you're like it's kind of like what Jesus tells the Pharisees, and I don't mean this because I don't think even like certainly not Dad, but like anyone else's heart is far from the Lord. But it almost waxes of Jesus saying the Pharisees, and he's really quoting the prophet Isaiah when he says, "You honor me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me." Right. right. It's making mm -hmm. sure that your heart is engaged in worship, right. yeah, and not just your lips. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And yeah, it's okay absolutely. to choose that. It's it's it's, it's yeah admirable. Yes. Yeah, to it's choose that. and it's authentic. It's necessary yeah. to choose. Well, you to... have to decide what kind of man do I want to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you you cannot be limited by what kind of man do I feel like today. Yeah, and it's no longer an emotional <laughs> response. <laughs> Not yeah. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, exactly, a hundred percent. 
Yeah. Sorry, I think we just all. No, I think we're all just trying. Like we're all just like this is a subject Sorry. we Getting all are passionate it. about. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I, that's exactly why I wanted to talk about it is yeah. because like so many people, it's like, well, I didn't, you know, I, that doesn't feel genuine, and it's like, but it should. Mm. So go for it anyway. Mm-hmm. You you want it to be genuine. Yeah. That's a genuine desire. Yeah. That you want it. Exactly. So then go for it. That itself is authentic. Initially, how many yeah. things start off like how like for Weston? Weston is he's a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. He works out a ton, as you can see, because this is a video podcast. Yeah. I told him you better <laughs> wear your I Heart My Wife shirt. <laughs> I'm kidding. I did not tell him that. He chose it I himself. But I do think it even fits the podcast. Like, does. I mean, we're sitting here like, what does it mean to be a man? That's what it means to be a man. Love right. your wife. Yes, sir. And be proud of it. Boldly advertise Boldly. that thing. Yes. I'm, Boldly I'm advertising it right there in Jesus' <laughs> name. And so we all, we all got our. Uh, I can only speak for myself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but you know, I'm sure there are days <laughs> Weston <laughs> does not feel like going to the gym. Gosh, mm-hmm. But how many, like, tell me the honest truth. How many times did the workout you wanted to do the least turn out to be mm. the best? Oh, like nine times out of 10. It was like, dang, I'm so glad yeah. I did yeah. that. Like, oh, like, especially because like, you know, I only, I only personal train from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. Yeah. Because then I'm here at the church nine to five. And so I work out. Maybe eat between, the mic a little more. Oh, sorry. You're and then I work out in between clients and stuff like that. So it'll be six o'clock in the morning and I have legs. And it's like the last thing I want to do oh, yeah. right now on five hours of sleep yeah. at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. is legs. And then it's like the best workout 100%. of the whole week. And I'm like, mm-hmm. man, that was awesome. Yeah. And you, you know? would miss it if you were a slave right. to what feels genuine. Yeah. Right? Right. You know what I mean, and again, when you, when what feels genuine lines up with the scriptures, you can trust what feels genuine. Oh my yeah. gosh, but when yeah. what feels genuine is antithetical mm-hmm. to scripture, or antithetical to Christ's likeness, right. you cannot. I mean, the Bible says, like, guard your heart, for it is deceitful right, right. above all things, mm-hmm. for out of it yeah. flow the issues of life. Literally, your heart is your own personal little liar. Right. That's why one of the biggest lies being perpetuated today is follow your heart. Oh, no. That is the biggest load of malarkey it's gotten, out there. Well, it's gotten people into way more. Yeah. Like, yeah. Tr- tribulation than they've Ted ever- Bundy followed his heart look right. where it got him right yeah you know? I mean you're not wrong <laughs> like you know what I'm saying <laughs> like you cannot <laughs> we just jumped off the deep end <laughs> yeah. wow sorry. we I mean, swan dive yes straight, I mean, extreme that, scenario no but, that's no, but, that's, that's, no, but that is the point that way we can all agree yeah. on the like, fact hey, that following your that heart dude at some point heart. Hundred yeah. percent. But the problem is, we're not all Ted Bundys, like, right? And, right. And Ted Bundy didn't start off Ted Bundy. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. These people, like Hitler, didn't start off Hitler. Yeah. It's as Song of Solomon, chapter two, verse fifteen says. Yeah. It's the small foxes mm-hmm. that ruin the vine. It's right. not no like a lot of us who are wanting to. If you're watching this podcast right now, chances are, and you made it this far. Right. You are somebody who wants to follow the Lord. You want to be the person of God that like you were created to be. No yeah. one like we're all pretty good at like fending off big big wolves, mm-hmm. but yeah. we're also good at tolerating little foxes. Yeah. And that's that the is thing, very true. Mm-hmm. Is like your heart can learn how to like protect those little foxes. And that's why you have to have a band of brothers yeah. who are mm-hmm. there to like call you out call you higher and that's another thing men don't like being called out you know no no, no I mean, they don't it's a hundred percent pride i mean yeah you, you start checking them on something they're doing yeah and pride a hundred percent takes over and yeah. they start fighting you on it yeah 100 percent. you call me out yeah 100 yeah, percent. well i'm doing it anyway so step up <laughs> i mean can we be yeah. honest the whole re- like and again, I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm not trying to insult anyone's intelligence. I, under- I understand people think they have arrived at the, th- the conclusions they have arrived at by logic, reason, explanation. But let's yeah. be real. You peel the layers back of atheism. Yeah. People stick their head in the sandbox of atheism because they are so desperate to not be accountable yeah. to God. Yes. Yeah. If God's not real, I'm not accountable to him. Yes. And then therefore I can do whatever I want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it, it, it genuinely atheism makes zero sense. I was yeah. Look at like the the divine order and orchestration of the cosmos. Like you don't get order from chaos. <laughs> right. Never one time has that yeah. ever happened. Like right. you're gonna tell me that all of this just happened by 
chance like yeah. that happens everything just magically came together it's you know right. what I'm saying like it's just as big of a faith statement as saying right it takes a way a bigger faith it, it, bigger faith. Faith. it takes yeah. way more there's... faith to be an atheist than yeah. it does to be a christian oh 100 yeah. yeah i don't yeah, have yeah, yeah. Enough and faith any to and be an atheist. yeah, yeah no. it's like <laughs> 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 it, it's it's really? crazy it, it yeah. for real and again i'm not trying to demonize i'm not trying to i'm attacking ideas i am not attacking people oh absolutely and that's another problem yes. let's go there yeah, yeah, yeah. is we are no longer allowed to attack ideas because right. we have graduated sadly it's not really graduated we have been demoted, demoted from yeah. all people are equal to all ideas are equal it, are, yeah. right mm -hmm. we yeah like which is if you infringe upon my idea or you tell me my idea is wrong you're right. telling me that it is now a value statement for some right. reason. Like 100%. I have now have I have lesser value because you don't yeah. agree with my idea. I am not talking about your value as a human being. Mm -hmm. In fact, my yeah. idea ascribes more value to you. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think that's another thing is like we we so want to avoid conflict. Yeah. And that's I I really and tell me if you agree. And I, I I would love you for you to push back. I think it makes the podcast more fun yeah. if you push back. <laughs> But I really think that the whole, well, that's your truth mm -hmm. and this is mm -hmm. my truth is solely a cop out to avoid conflict. Oh, oh for sure. They don't, it is. they don't agree at all with your truth. No. But as yeah. long as it can be your truth and I can have my truth. And it, right. And yeah, as long as you don't touch my truth, I won't touch yours. Yeah. And yeah. I, I'm yeah. happy with yeah. you living in like this make believe world. You know what I mean? Right. And it's not even really that I love you and I honor what you believe. It's like, right. I don't agree at all, but I, I so want to avoid conflict that, you know, I'm acting like this amicable person who's like, oh, like we can all just have our truth. No, no. Think for a second. Right. We can't all have our truths when our truths are opposing one another. Yeah, no. Right. right. There has to be. They can't be both. Truth. No. Yeah. Be true. At some point, it's not truth. At some point, it's yeah. right. And yeah. we have, and there's a lot of it that's not 100%. And we've got a lot of men who want to avoid conflict at all costs. But then let's take talk about the flip side of that. We have other men who are looking for conflict. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And that's yeah. just as hurtful. That, that's yeah. just as damaging. Right. And it's yeah. people because if you go around looking for it, you're going to find it. And eventually, mm -hmm. you're going to run into somebody who wants it just as much as you do. Oh, and that will right. be an atom, like atomic bomb. 100%. 100%. And yeah. You end up hurting 100%. way more people than you ever wanted. Too, yeah. yeah, you know, and both yeah. of those places come from a unhealed, unhealthy yeah. place in each person. Yeah. They're trying right. to fill this void, and we've got yeah. so many men. And again, I I want to say this with a bunch of like empathy and sympathy in my heart, and like my heart goes out to you. But we've got so many men who have such deep father wounds, mm -hmm. and they are taking out what they feel they got didn't did get or didn't get from their dad yeah. on everybody else. Mm -hmm. Right. And everything they do in life is an attempt to appease their dad. I mean, their right. dad could be dead and mm -hmm. they're still trying to please him. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's a real right. thing. Right. Yeah. And is. that is why we have to have men who are rooted and grounded in who they are in their father in heaven. Like right. who yeah. they are in Christ. You yes. know what I mean? Um and at some point like we could get into childhood trauma. I understand that childhood trauma is a very real thing. It needs to be ministered to. It needs yep. to be counseled. Yep. We need to take it seriously. Yep. But at some point, you are an adult. Yeah. And at some point, you cannot keep blaming what happened to you at seven years old for why you are still a jerk to this day. You right. know oh, you're being absolutely. a jerk. Well, well the, it, good oh, is, absolutely. the good news is you don't have to. No, you yeah. don't. Because you, you do have a father. You do. Yeah, you have, and and he's, he's up in heaven. He's right. the king of kings, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so what's, what's interesting about that is talking about having a band of brothers to um, iron sharpens iron, yeah, probably right? Seven, seven, is is yeah. putting yourself around and within a group of people who do know the truth. Yeah. Right. So there's in that instance, there's no such thing as my truth versus your truth. We're all just trying to get to the but, truth. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so that that's I mean, well, that's just a good opportunity for men to specifically put themselves yeah. in those situations yeah. of uh -huh. being around other like minded believers. And you don't got if if you're looking for conflict, just plant yourself in the right spot. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like if you have if you have that community first, uh -huh. now we can now we can butt heads or whatever, but we're not working against each other. We're working with each other. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you have a community of brothers, it becomes the, for us, it's yeah. the four of you versus the problem. Yes. Of right. whichever one. And like, I mean, it's like the same thing. We're all married. It's the same thing yeah. in marriage. Yep. If you two are having conflict, it's not 
you versus your spouse. Not no. at all. It's you and your spouse versus the issue. Right. Yeah. And so when you have a band of brothers and you have, you know, a good group and a good community, it becomes a community versus the issue. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. it's always the enemy trying to come up against one of you. Oh, right. and, it becomes, and, and it becomes that point of stepping in and interceding in prayer for your brother, mm -hmm. which is another thing that is far too feminized in Christian culture yeah. is that w the women are the intercessors. There are Let's far more, only ones who can get far help. more women intercessors than there are men who step up to intercede. Boy, and that's more. problematic. It's Very. Not, 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 not with the women. Yeah. No, 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 no. My, please, please keep God, doing God, y'all are praying. Yeah. Thank yes. God because you're on your knees. Men aren't. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> because they aren't. And honestly, it just speaks to the integrity of the women. 100%. That they don't, they don't even have a man championing them mm -hmm. or leading no. them in that, yet they are still, still doing it. Still yes. doing it. How many times is it the man coming against it? True. True. Honestly, how many families is it out there that the that the mom is the spiritual head of the household? Yeah. yeah. Which, like, good for you. Yeah. Please praise keep, God. Please keep going. Keep leading. But, like at some point, your man's got to step up and take that role because that's yeah. that's not for you to have. And and let's be real and let's give some some helpful advice here as men. I think yeah. we have a right to speak to this. Let's do it. You will never call your husband into a place of God honoring leadership by shaming him into it. Boy. Mm. I mean, he no, will never get no, there. No, no, he will never shame him into being the man of God he's called to be. Now that doesn't mean shame, right? Nobody will through shame. No, it doesn't mean you don't tell right. the it's truth. The, it's, it's the goodness. The but every it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. Yes. Well, it's grace and, and truth. You know. yeah. And tr yeah, it's right. grace and Jesus truth together. They both. have to be coinciding together. You can't just straight up give truth because that's going to be the shaming part. And you can't give too much grace because then you're allowing them to be the enabling. Yeah. Right. Enabling a hundred percent. You have to have both. Right. And every there's husband, there's the, every, every husband knows like nothing beats an encouraging word oh, from your wife. Lord. Dude, oh, my wife will... hyping you up, bro. On the smallest things, just pick one thing. The yeah. one thing that guy did right, even remotely yeah. and it will come back tenfold. And yes. like, and it's not like saying, I'm not just trying to tell Lyndon to do that, but it <laughs> has just, I, somebody pointed that out in my life and I see it so clearly. Yeah. yeah. Nothing has motivated me more than the good things in my life. Yeah. My wife's pregnant. So having a baby boy on the way has just motivated me yeah. 10 times. Right. Uh -huh. You it know, I, does. I'm not fueled on hate. I'm fueled on that yeah. love, that right, encouragement that, yeah. from yes. the Lord. Through my wife. Through yeah. Your wife. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, Kylie and I, we just had our baby. Yeah. And as soon as, you yeah. know, humble flex, little baby Noah. Come yeah. On. As soon as she, uh, Kylie was pregnant, it just took yeah. my motivation and yeah. love to a deeper level that I didn't even know oh existed. Yeah. yeah. And I, I remember Kylie and I talking about that. And it was just this beautiful thing. And then, of course, during that time, the Lord just continued to. Yeah. You know, the Lord bless his family and he continued to open doors and right. open doors in our hearts too. Mm -hmm. That just has brought us even closer together than we even knew was possible. Well, yeah. let, let's be real. And like, I'm about, I'm about to get a little PG-13 just so. Just oh, yeah. Uh, but let's be real. This is the no counterfeit. So I, we got to keep it real. Yeah. You want your wife to be sexually attracted to you? Yeah. Lead her spiritually. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my like, God. Like, seriously. There, I, I, for the right woman, mm -hmm. right. for a woman of God, there right. is nothing more attractive yeah. than seeing a man yield to the Lord oh, and, yes. and initiate. Yeah. Like, yes. hey, babe, I'd really like if we would, if we could read. And again, go watch the podcast where Beth and I talked about how long we went without reading our Bible together. Mm -hmm. Now, she read her Bible, I read my Bible, but it was on our own time and we would talk about the things of God, but we did not have that regular like routine of like sitting down yeah. and being on the same page of the Bible together. Um, We're on she, and off with that. Yeah, well, and I, I'm I, not, I, I'm not I want the, trans, the transparency no, I'm not and that's a why- I need to do better what We all on do. that front, but- But it's that thing of like, the best days Beth and I have are the days I am overtly leading spiritually. Yeah. yeah. Like things are just clicking and I have to take inventory and be like, what was it about today? <laughs> right. That right. just like, man, we got it. And I was like, yeah, I initiated spiritual things. I was leading overtly spiritually. Yeah. Well, and, and even to go a little bit further in those moments, you were leading by following. Come on. You were leading by following the Lord, just as right. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Yeah. Yeah. First Corinthians they, 11. 1. It's, yeah. That's what's been going through my head this whole what's time. What's so attractive to them is that you are submitting yourself to the Lord. Right. Yes. And we go back to like a moment of worship and you come in here and worship starts and you go straight to your knees. Nothing is going to be more beautiful to your family and more impactful on maybe your son, your daughter, or your wife 
but then to see your life is submitted and therefore their life is submitted to the Lord. Yeah. And there's and just a in the hands of the Father. Oh, absolutely. Come on. And there's this extra layer of trust that they can have in you. Yeah. That once that, that they initially like they want to submit more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and not submit in a way of just like, oh, I'm just gonna do whatever you say and everything. Right. Yeah. But like submit as far as like as as the Bible says is submit. Yeah. But also leading your family. I mean, it's biblical as it says lead it as Christ led the church. I mean, you're, you're right. referencing it's, Ephesians 5, yeah. Yes, and it's serving. You lead your family by serving your family. Mm-hmm. And the best way to serve your family is to lead them in things like praying, yeah. is to read your Bible, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ephesians 5, what you just referenced, is like a whole part where Paul is encouraging wives towards their husbands and husbands towards their wives. Mm-hmm. Sadly, so often the only portion yep. of Ephesians 5 that gets quoted is wives submit to your husbands, right? Yeah. right. But let's be real. He does incur- he does say wives mm-hmm. should be submissive and yep. respectful to to their husbands. Yep. But then he shifts his gaze over to the husbands and he mm-hmm. says, "And husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, so much so that he gave himself up for her." Yes. Right. Who has the greater responsibility here? Oh, the, the husband. husband. Yeah. Yeah. And let's be real. Let's be real. What woman wouldn't willfully submit to an Ephesians 5 man? Oh, mm-hmm. dude. If you are being an Ephesians 5 dude. man, I promise you, you will pull out an Ephesians 5 woman. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why whenever you are leading your family in that way and you start to sacrifice things in your life for your family, it's sacrifice, but it doesn't feel like sacrifice. Right. Like, you know, you start to give up things that like, like, you want to go do this after work instead of go be with your family, but instead you go be with your family. It's a no brainer, even mm-hmm. though it technically is sacrificing and you yeah. are giving up something for, from your, for mm-hmm. yourself, for them. It doesn't feel that way mm-hmm. yeah. at yeah. all because you're following and you're leading as Christ. Well, because in that being as Christ love. Yeah. And in that moment, the goal isn't, for any sort of selfish gain. No. It was for your family. Mm-hmm. No, and yes, so sir. you're sacrificing it for your family. Your family is sacrificing it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, and, a, a, I mean, to be honest, a lot of m- problems that go on in America, or in the world, I should say, not America, but in the world, would be solved if men just submitted themselves mm-hmm. to Christ. Oh, yes. yes. Um, I, the I spirit mean, lead. Yes. And, yeah. yeah, because they just, they don't. Yeah. And that's why... So many of our jails are filled with men. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's just like what we need to submit ourselves right to Christ. Well, we got a yeah. lot of worn out men and right. a lot of worn out Christian men, right? Because they, I think it's a, I think it's Galatians six says, "Walk in the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh." Yeah, we got so, true. so many men trying to just not walk in the desires of the flesh, yeah. but not walking in the spirit. And literally Galatians 6 is saying, if you would just focus on the spirit, yeah, you will look up and you'll be like, I have not been gratifying the desires of the flesh at yeah. all. I haven't yeah. been yeah. lusting. I haven't been um, feeling insecure. I haven't right. been anxious. I haven't been going to these other things rather than going to God because I've been going yeah. To God. To God. Like, well, and, there's, yeah. and there's consequences to both, yeah. right? But one is better than the other. And it's Romans 8 says, for if you, not to go King James, but this is the one I got memorized. I love it. For if ye live after the, after the flesh, ye shall die. Right. But if yeah. ye, through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on, bro. And so, <laughs> yeah. And so, we want to live. Yeah. And you want to live. live. You want your family to live. You want to pursue life, yep. not anxiety, fear of the future, mm-hmm. depression, fear of the presence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and so well, yeah, yeah. Go, go for it. I Christ. mean, we just have such a world today that just like we were talking about earlier, that is so built around laziness that mm-hmm. it it takes effort it does. to maintain a relationship with Christ. Yep. Yeah. It, and we have this world where it's just, oh yeah, you know, oh yeah. I love Jesus, and you know, I know He loves me, so I'm just gonna sit right here and yeah, I'm gonna watch my football game yeah. and not go to church. You have to choose yeah. it, yeah. and we just Hello. need to. We need to call that out and call it higher. 100%. Of just, that is not how God described the men to be. No. Not passive. No. Think no not, not passive. And, and yeah, oh. not passive at all. And yeah. a lot of men are. They are. Because they just want to get to the weekend and do nothing. Yeah. And, out. Yeah. Sit and a lazy boy and be a lazy boy. This is kind right. of random. It's just a random quote, but it came from <laughs> one of my coaches in football back in the day. My team stunk. 
He sucked. <laughs> no good. But he would always say, I'd rather you fail at 100 miles an hour than just fail not even trying. Yes. Right. And so for men, we're not called to be passive. We're called to get after it, mm-hmm. to go after it, to pursue yeah. the Lord. Therefore, yeah. you have to choose it. You're not just going to feel it and then just randomly things yeah. go. You got to think and understand how much God loves you for that to actually cult- cultivate. Mm-hmm. And if you're yeah. waiting until you're perfect to try, mm-hmm. right? Like, you're, not, you're, you're never, you're never going to arrive. Um, you know, Proverbs says this, if where there is no oxen um, at the plow, the stalls are clean. Right. Mm-hmm. But in order to have the strength of the ox and the plow, you're going to have to deal with the poop in the stall. That's what that mm. proverb is trying to say. That's a good Dang. proverb. Like yeah, if, if you want the ox, you want the power of the ox, you're going to have to be willing to say, there's going to be poop too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. there, if you want to walk in the power of the spirit, you're going to fall doing it. Like you're going to yeah. like hiccup doing it, but I would rather hiccup trying to yes. pursue the Lord. Try like, yeah. I mean, again, Beth and I got really real. Like I, there were moments where she was begging me for stuff. And then when I finally give it to her and I finally like do the things that she's wanting, like spiritual things with her that she's wanting me to, she acts like she was upset by it and stuff like that. But it's because she went so long without it that by the time she got it, she almost like resented, oh, uh, now we're doing dang. it kind of thing. Right. And I could have been like, for real? Like I finally like do what right, you want I me do, to do? I do this. and But we had to both just go, no, that's the enemy trying to like stop mm-hmm. what God is doing. This is a good yeah. thing. Let's just celebrate we even did it. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of people, I can hear guys in the back of my head saying, you know, well, what about grace? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm I I'm under the dispensation of grace. Dallas Willard, <laughs> an incredible yeah. theologian, said this. He said, grace is the enemy of earning, mm. not the enemy of effort. Boy. Yeah, that's good. It's the enemy of earning. Right. Mm-hmm. God is against earning. You're not you're not called to earn anything from the Lord. No. Earn your salvation, earn no. your standing, earn your calling, whatever. Yeah. But grace 100% will require effort. Right. Paul that's... says like I worked harder with the grace of God on my my mm-hmm. life than I ever did as the Pharisee of Pharisees mm-hmm. of the tribe right. of Benjamin circumcised on the eighth day. You know what I mean? Like right. all his his whole um pedigree. He's like I'm actually working harder now. Mm-hmm. But there's grace on it. Truthfully right. walking in grace, you should be having to work harder because you are being called higher. Right. Yeah. So truthfully walking a life of grace with everyone, you have to be far more conscientious of your your daily interactions with people, mm-hmm. no matter how you're feeling that day. Yeah. And that that's where James goes with faith without works is dead. Dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just you, you yeah. don't have any faith. If you're not doing stuff, have an effort. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred you know? percent. Like put not the weight saying, of your life on it. Right, and that like people will take that and you're like, oh, it's it's all workspace. It's not workspace. It's not. No, but that's not what it's saying. No. In order to you know continue to maintain a relationship with Christ, it really does take effort. And, 100%. Yeah, and taking captive the thoughts of your mind, yeah. and you know, yep. ke- well, keeping God on the forefront of your mind. Yeah. Yep, it yeah, takes absolutely. effort, and it takes it a does. conscious decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in in your life, and oh, good. that's something that we as men have to remember, and that it's not a feminine thing. <laughs> no, right. yeah. Well, that's yes. why I love that story that Dad talks about whenever he says that he was working at the house and he left his saw in the backyard, yeah. his brand oh, new saw, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's starting to rain, and he is getting into bed, and he realizes he left it in the backyard, and he says, "Lord, would you please just protect my saw? I don't want it to get wet." And he says, "I do what you can't, not what you won't." Right. That's what the Lord told him. Yep. That's yeah. what the Lord told him. He told him, I do what you can't, not what you won't. It requires effort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the so things strong. you can't do, that's where the Such grace of God word. comes in. Yes. But the things you can do, you have to do. Yeah. And that's yeah. just called we're taking that's hey, just called taking responsibility. Can I just acknowledge I am being massively convicted right now? Like <laughs> I know like we're we're speaking very dogmatically because the it we all believe this. Yeah. yeah. But I I I think I can speak for all of us yeah. that as we were preaching this to you, we are simultaneously being convicted by our right. own words. Hey, but this is what happens when you got that band of brothers. 100%. Yeah. This is what you can talk about. This is what this is motivating me like crazy. Yes, right, right now. <laughs> you know, I've got <laughs> Oh yeah. And honestly, the Bible will do that to you. Yeah, I kinda, you we know? should kind of bring back some of those baller, like write down, write it on your football cleat uh, on, versus, you know. you know, work willingly as though you're working for the Lord rather than for man. Yeah, right. You know? right. I mean, we're talking about, uh, I think I forget, you said something about people like, what about grace? Yeah. Yes, we were saved by grace, uh-huh. but through faith. Right. Did right. you have Ephesians to choose two. that faith? Right. You know, did you have to choose to have faith about something? Yeah. And, right. and again, we're not, 
working for our salvation. Right. But you got to work for the sanctification. It's believe yeah. in your heart and confess with your tongue that Jesus yeah. is Lord that gets you saved. Yeah. It's not just, well, you're just saved because Jesus died for you. Yeah. Just because. Because yeah, he died for everybody. Right. Not everybody's saved. Because Ephesians it's, 2, like, yeah, verses 8 and 9 um, are all about you are saved by grace through faith. This is not of your works, lest anyone should boast, all those things. But then it moves into, and you are the masterpiece of God. You're the handiwork of God in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. saved for good works. Right. Not right. by good works, yeah. but right. for, for them, good works. Right? Yeah. For. That God predestined yeah, we go. you would do, right? Mm -hmm. So right. it's like, hey, now that we got this whole like salvation thing out of the way, now you can really live. Like we act like, yeah. and I'm not, act, I'm not trying to minimize salvation. Salvation's huge, but salvation just gets us. It's, it's like yeah. so many times we think that God just kind of like canceled our debt and then got us into this neutral place. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't just canceled your debt. You went from being massively in debt to no longer just like not owing anyone anything. Right. You now own a cattle on a thousand hills and all the oil underneath. Yeah. Right. How are you going to leverage that for the kingdom of God? Because yeah. like, yeah. I'm going to leave this in your charge. Right. Yeah. And it's too much times that salvation is just looked at as hell insurance. Well, now I'm saved. Now I don't have to go to hell. Right. Yeah, and that's the end. That's, and that's, that's very just, true. That's point blank period. Yeah. No. Now that you're saved, you can start bringing heaven to earth. Right. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's in like here in San Angelo, we have it on our wall. It's in San Angelo as it is in heaven. Yeah, right. But it's the same place for where you're at. It's mm -hmm. in your hometown as it is in heaven or wherever you're living right now. 100%. It's, it, it's not the end. You know, right 100%. there. Mm -hmm. You have to keep going. You have now to. you get to live life in abundance, you know, because mm -hmm. we're also called to thrive on this world. Yeah. We're not called to just scrape by, scrape by and survive. Right. You know, we're called to thrive. And so why would you just get to the, like, get to the first little plateau. Right. And you're saved from like falling off and then not keep going. Right. And keep diving into yeah. your relationship and reaping all the benefit from it, all yeah. the blessing that comes with it. Right. Yeah. Theologically, this is called the dichotomy of being saved from, but being saved for. Mm. Right. Like these two things, like Jesus didn't just save you from something, he saved you for something. For something. Right. He didn't just save it's you for works. something, he saved you from something. Right. 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 Yeah. So, so good. Well, what, well, this might be a super dude thing to say, go for but it. We're, I'm thinking about, so, I'm thinking about, um, you'd be baptized by the Holy Spirit right, and now yeah. you have the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, yeah. which is what saved us. Yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. That spirit rose Jesus from the dead, which defeated sin. Right. And now that lives inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just going to hang out at home all day. <laughs> I got <laughs> convicted <laughs> while we were praying leading into this. I got convicted as we were praying. I'm sitting there and I, my mind posture is towards like thinking up uh -huh. and all of a sudden I just felt the Holy Spirit within me be like, dude, I'm in you. I'm in you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a heart posture, not a upward posture. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. And so sure. it's like, and then it just like, it's the not whole, far away. Right. He was right. like, and like trying to bring him to me. Right. Yeah. I don't believe the of spirit. Like, I don't, I believe when you're baptized by the Holy Spirit, the spirit's in you. Yeah. Just point blank period. Right. It doesn't but, come and go right. based on how emotional you get. Right. It's there. And so we can, Again, going back to the worship moments, you might not feel it, but if yeah. you're saved, it's there. Yeah. Bro, yes. let me tell you something. I almost pulled this into my sermon this past Thursday and I did it. Let me pull, I'm getting my phone out because I'm pulling my Bible app up. I want to go to Hebrews 11. Hold on one second. Hebrews. Just call and impress them when you need them. I know, right? Bible They've got the third grade person when you need them. I yeah, know, for real. Uh, Hebrews 11. At Christian school kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is right back here. Hold on one second. Um, here we go. Verse 32. How much more, this is the uh, New Living Translation. How much more do I need to say? So the, the Hebrews 11 for context is mm -hmm. the hall of faith, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We're rolling through all these Old Testament, keyword, Old right. Testament figures who lived by faith, right? So now we get to the latter portion of the chapter, verse 32. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, David, Samuel, and the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, yeah. ruled with justice, like and me. received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, yeah. quenched the flames of fire, and yeah. escaped the by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle, put whole <laughs> armies to flight. Women received their lo loved ones back from death. But get this, but others were tortured. Yeah. Refute others. So there's right. some that like overcame, and then there's some that 
were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. Yeah. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some were jeered at. Their backs were cut open with whips. Others chained in prisons. Some died by stoning. I'm crying like as I'm reading this. Yeah. Some were sawn in half. Mm. Others were killed by the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, yeah. wandering over wow. deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. Yeah. Here's what the Holy Spirit told me. You are reading about Old Testament figures. You know mm. what that means? They didn't have the Holy Spirit. Right. Dang. Yeah, no, 100%. And they did all that. They, yeah. Wow. You have the Holy Ghost. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing with it? Like, right. if these dudes did all that, like they escaped the edge of the sword, they did all these supernatural things, but they also willingly gave themselves to being sawn in a half, right? Refusing to like back off their faith in God when it would have set them free, right? And they did all that without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah, like right. we. We have what they longed for. Yeah. Right. The literal right. presence of God 24-7 dwelling in our mortal bodies. Right. And I don't know that we've seen any of that. I mean, oh we're, we're afraid to be even slightly I mean, persecuted. Yeah. Right. Right. Someone does a mean comment on Facebook and it's the end of the you world. You fall apart. Right. Yeah. Well, it's par for the core. You know, like the <laughs> things we brag about, the early church was like, bro, what? like what? The, yeah. If you were to brag to an early church member, like somebody who was like, yeah, like year one after yeah. Jesus died and they're like joining the church and you're like, bro, like, you know what I did? Like I, you know, willingly gave up my car <laughs> so that someone could right. have I, it. And, I, for a weekend. For a, Yeah, for a weekend. <laughs> they'd be like, excuse me? What's a car? I, I didn't just get right. Well, number one, they'd say, what's, yeah, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> but they'd probably be speaking Aramaic. But um, they would be like, <laughs> I gave up everything. I gave up a home. I gave up my business. I gave up. And then they would start talking about the relationships they gave up. I gave up a relationship with my mom and dad. I gave up a relationship, some of them with my children, Mm -hmm. not because they don't want to fraternize with their family, but their family due to their allegiance to Christ now refuses to fraternize with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And bro, we have it so cush, but we 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 don't want to feel anything bad. And this is yeah. where this was a big thing I wanted to talk about on this podcast, so please hang with us. Men need to be the quickest people to repent. Mm-hmm. That's true. And sadly, we are often the last. Oh my gosh. And yeah. I don't just mean repent to the Lord. I, I fully do mean to go there, but that's typically what we think of when we think repentance, repenting to God. What it, when was the last time you repented to your family? Mm. When was the last time you repented to your wife? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I have used that that I have used that many times. Like when I know that I have wronged Beth or I yeah. have like mm-hmm. missed it, I will say, babe, I repent yeah. of having thought that way, spoken to you that way. And again, like these are ways like other people would give me a pass. Cause like right. I'm not over here cussing my wife. I'm not over here demeaning my wife, but when I yeah. overlook right. something or neglect something or like don't follow through mm-hmm. with something I told her I would do. Um, when was the last time you didn't demand that your kids apologize to you, right. but you went and apologized to your children? Oh my, yeah. And that's something like, I try to be as, especially with Wyatt, why I have two boys, by the way, I have a two and a half year old and I have a three month old. So my two and a half year old, there, there have been many times where he was trying to be silly or yeah. trying to play and did something and I got on to him. And then my wife has to be like, hey, he was playing. Like, right. you were pretty sharp with him and he was playing. And I have to walk up to him and say, hey, daddy, sorry. Hey, yeah, dad was wrong. Yeah. You know, what, what dad, how dad just talked to you was wrong. And I'm very sorry. And he says, okay. <laughs> but yeah. still, but it's, it's, it's two. At, at two years old. Like, but that's something I, I, purposefully want to be doing even at the age of two. I mean, yeah. I did that to him whenever he was a baby and he yeah. would just be like, just staring at me. <laughs> yeah. Like, but yeah, yeah it's, it's something so I try to purposefully do and I'm not batting a thousand. What about you know? like repenting yeah. to other men? Yeah. Like, yeah. And acknowledging right. bro, like I was, I, I've been so wrong. I was wrong to say that to you. I was wrong to treat you that way. Um, yeah. Like we need more men 
to it being to be willing to admit when they're wrong. And I'm not acting like all of a sudden you become feminine in how you say it. I'm yeah. like, hey, you know, I'm not again, I and I don't want to like be weird in how I depict that, but like you know what I'm saying of like I'm not you can still be a man yeah. while you I mean fully admit that you were wrong. And sometimes men do this. They talk about how wrong they were, but then they try to like justify it. Justify it. We were both yeah. wrong. Yeah, we yeah, you know, we're both wrong. But like, you know, I I want to say I was I'm wrong. Sorry. Yeah. Like, you know, I know we both got our fault in this thing. Yeah. You know, I, heard, I mean, don't virtue signal. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Like I I know somebody said this, you know, maybe you were wrong, maybe your portion of what was wrong was only 2%. Yeah. And they're they're in charge of 98. Like they were 98% wrong, you were 2% wrong. You need to apologize for 100% yeah. of your 2%. Yeah. 100%. That's a good point. 100%, 100%. Yeah, of the 2%. Point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Or just how many times they walk up and they're like, you know, Things were said by both of us that were pretty hurtful. Right. right. How many times have you heard that yeah. one? I've heard that one a ton of yeah. times. And I'm like. That's I mean, not like, repentance. Yeah. yeah, right. yeah but. No, but that's that's I'm, not repentance. I'm sorry I came across that way. I hate that part. Yeah. I'm sorry that. Or uh, I'm sorry you felt that way. Right. Like when, like, when apologizing. Saying, we've all like, said like, that. Like, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've, that. my wife has swiftly. Nip swiftly that. gotten that <laughs> out of being like, yeah. hey. Babe, I'm so sorry. You felt like I was being rude, and I'm genuine. I'm being. I'm being like. I'm being like. Rude. Like genuinely, I'm like <laughs> trying to apologize. Yeah. But the language is a hundred percent not taking responsibility for yeah. the fact that yeah. what I said, my intentions out the door. Right. Yeah. That, that your intentions no longer matter when you've hurt someone. Yeah. It's you have to apologize a hundred percent for the fact that you hurt them. Yeah. Because no matter how you intended it, you hurt them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, let's be real. Jesus is the person who had. Nothing to apologize for, right? Ever, but he was also the meekest mm. man yeah. who ever walked right. the planet. Um, Carson, you were just saying something earlier. What was it you said in the backyard? Like, Jesus was meek, not weak. Yes, that's they, true. Like he had the strength to do something about it, right? But he refrained from doing it mm-hmm. right. for our sake. Retaliating, right? Retaliating or doing anything like that—that that doesn't make him weak. It no. makes him. Uh, honestly, like strong. strong. Yeah. Then it does. Stronger than- you show emotional strength when you choose to be meek. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Oftentimes, the the biggest, loudest, you know, get in your face kind of guys are generally, and I would say generally, I would say 100% of the time, emotionally the weakest men around. 100%. Right. Because they are 100% acting out of insecurity, trying to no longer appear weak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is how I was for a long time. Like speaking, like, I'm going to go back to the worship thing, but speaking from a place where I've only started to become emotionally intelligent, as you could say, within like the last like six to eight months of like, oh, actually wow. like, oh yeah, I am did not do good for a long hey, time. you're good. <laughs> but like three years of my marriage was like, not so great on the emotional side. I didn't cry for like five years. Straight, oh, dude, it was terrible. I had the opposite like, I, problem. I, 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 I cried at my wedding, and then like that was like the last time. Yeah, for like <laughs> ever. But I, uh, actually acknowledging my emotions and realizing that it's actually way manlier to acknowledge to your acknowledge. Emotions, oh, yeah, to acknowledge your emotions. Yeah. then hide them. That is weakness, right. if you ask me. Well, and I would say anyone over here, yeah. hiding your emotions is way weaker. Than it is. What's it the takes easier real route? It, yeah. is, it takes real strength to acknowledge it. Uh-huh. It is 100% the easier way out. But as I've been doing that, I've had many moments of just crying to my wife for like 45 minutes. Right. And I'm like bawling. Right. And then taking that into worship, going back to the mm-hmm. worship thing of now that I've officially like started like acknowledging my own emotions and letting the Lord into those places where I didn't realize I was still hurt from seventh grade right. crap. You know, stuff I was still carrying from a child. So going back to the childhood trauma thing of like, I'm an adult and it's about time that, you know, I let that crap be gone. You know, like yeah. I'm getting, like, I'm letting it be the past. In the you same know? Way Your son is right. closer to that age than you are. A hundred percent. And mm-hmm. I, can, I, my family cannot afford me to keep hanging on to stuff from there. Yeah, right. My right. family cannot afford a non-emotional father or husband. Yeah. It, it, it's it's not, time that that's be put to bed. Be put yeah. to bed. That In, a lot of men... Leading their house emotionless. It's yeah. mm-hmm. terrible to yeah. do that. Well, and and then going into worship. I'm so sorry. No, you go ahead. Going into worship, allowing the Lord to now, you know, um, minister to those places. I can take those in worship. And honestly, I feel his presence way thicker yes. than I did before. And I had no idea that was impossible. Right. Because right. it wasn't like I never did. Right. But now that I'm actually emotionally vulnerable, 
to not just to anybody. I'm not just pouring my heart to everyone who will listen. Right. right. You know, there's wisdom. You can be emotional and be wit and be wise with who you share it to. Right. But now that I've now been able to do that with myself and with my wife and with the Lord, I'm way more vulnerable to his presence when it's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. When his presence is yeah. there. Yeah. No, I agree. And one thing we were talking about that, uh, well, we've brought it up is like having a, having a band of brothers yeah. is, is vital, vital in being, a, oh. being a man of God, mm-hmm. vital of having that support group to fall back on and yeah. who you, you can open up to yeah. and they will love on you, but call you out and call you higher. A hundred percent. I mean, I have done the most growing when, especially my dad, you know, yeah. calls me out and calls me higher. Absolutely. I mean, I've had some of the most enlightening moments in my life that have changed the way I think Right. Yeah. when my dad or, you know, one of y'all, you know, points point something, something out to me that I'm doing wrong and be like, oh, dang. dang, like I was wrong and I need to do better. And, yeah. you know, going, you know, kind of retreating back to the idea we were talking about earlier of like, you know, your truth and my truth right. is so crazy because in my own experience, I've had, I've found the truth by other people or, you know, people of God pointing it out to me and not coming to it on my own. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Um, when you have a a community of men to be around, it's awesome. It kind of reminds me of like, if you're practicing for a sport and you're, you're leading, it's leading up to the game. One of the best ways to practice or the way you practice is against your own team. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not to, not to, you know, pretend to be the bad guy or anything like that. Yeah. But that's how you sharpen one another is by getting together. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't just go constantly compete against other teams. You get together, you have strategies, you build one another up, you get the weakest link, you get him in the weight room, you get him stronger, and then you can put him on the field. Yeah. You teach the plays. And so being able to practice repentance, being able to practice um, opening up emotionally, practice trying to quote scripture, anything like that with other men, where if you can say something heretical and somebody's going to check you and it's not going to take somebody away from the kingdom, it's just going to strengthen it. Right, right. You need that community. And again, there is the right way to go about correction. Yeah. There's a right mm-hmm. way to, there's a loving way to do it. Absolutely. Right. But there still is this like, hey, like I was obviously being corrected. I was obviously being challenged. Yeah. I was yeah. obviously being held to a standard um, when my brother came to me with this thing. And there's something also like so many times we're too busy, like, competing in a negative sense mm. that we don't compete in the in the sense that we should be competing yeah. in all honesty i should not be competing against any one of you for like a stat a worldly feeling or a right. worldly status right i should be competing with you being like yo the way Braden quoted the king james version of cool. romans 8 that should like spark I, I wanna, something within that us. Should spark something I within me. Like not, not to be like I want to be better than Brayden at that, but I like, be like I want to be like Brayden in that. Right. Where I want to like where he where is he, like Christ. Yeah, if he can do oh, yeah. Romans eight, maybe I can do Romans eight, nine, and ten. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if I, I've seen it's possible, and that it should be inspiring. It shouldn't yes. be. Like, it shouldn't be demotivating. It right. should be inspiring. And a lot of times that comes into your own heart and how you perceive things. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I try to teach my student. I teach dance as well, and I try to teach my students when we go to competitions, and they see these people out there that are just absolutely insane and incredibly talented. And I'd say you take that as motivation by being inspired. Don't feel defeated. Don't feel, oh, poor me. I'm just right, not good enough right. in comparison. Because, you know, in the in the kingdom, we're all we're all gonna be by the with the father. Yes. You know, there's not gonna be right. some sort of tier where you just, well, you weren't that good or whatever. Right. You might store a few more riches. Right. But down here we can we can build each other up and we can actually yeah. help one another by right. taking inspiration and mm-hmm. Yeah. Competing healthily. Yeah. For me, it's like in the gym. Personally, I lift a lot by myself. I'm a fan of it. I Mm -hmm. like to just put on my headphones. I only have so much time. Yeah. I personally like lifting by myself. But when I do have somebody there with me Mm -hmm. to challenge me, I lift. Oh, you get way way further. Way harder. Way harder. Way harder. Yeah. The lifts are way crazier. I put up better numbers and stuff like that because I have someone there who challenges me. Yeah. 
but doesn't make me feel less than. Right. right. And that's, yeah. I mean, and of course, that's me being careful with who I pick to work out with. Mm-hmm. Now, like, granted, there's wisdom in who you have around bro, bro, you. Go right, right. I'm go, not yeah, to say go, 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 go off on that, bro. About who you have around you because you can easily get into a place of, well, I just need community. So anyone who comes around is just automatically right. no, be Don't it. lower yeah, your no. standard. Be picky. Well, don't I mean, lower your standard. you have in your inner circle mm-hmm. and you don't have to have let everyone in. Yeah. yeah. You can't afford there's to let everybody in your inner circle. There's a difference between being friendly yeah. And being friends. Right. 100%. I am friendly with as many people as I possibly can. The Bible says, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with all people. Yeah. Right. As far, so as far as it depends on me, I'm going to be friendly. Right. 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 But that does not make us friends. You right. Know? And yeah. like my wife has even really challenged me of like, I will haphazardly call someone flippantly call someone my friend and be like, oh yeah, my friend over there, they're at whatever, whatever. She's like, Yo, I've never heard about them. Yeah. Never. You've never, like, they're not, you're, we've been married four years, bro. Yeah. They are not your friend. Yeah. And no, she's like, that you, you don't even know them. Like, you need to guard who you're willing to say, like, that is yeah. my friend. Because yeah. right. it needs to mean something. We need, yeah. we need and to, it, we need to be hospitable to all people. Right. It's specific, even unbelievers. Yeah. But we need Especially. to have fellowship with believers. Right. The, 100%. Yes. I mean, the person who I'll, I think of constantly when I think of this is, Jesus himself, you know, he was very particular in who his 12 Word. was, yeah. yes. you know, and he had his 12. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then he went out and, and he had the 70. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and then, then he, all, and he also hung out with sinners oh, yeah. and things like yeah. that. But his 12 were yeah strategic, st- strategic yeah. and were, you know, men of God. And yeah, he it's, kept it's, influencing it's, them. They right. never got to mm. influence him. And, right. and that is huge. Like yeah. if, if you can stand to be around certain people and know I'm going into this atmosphere so I can be an influence on them yeah. and not become influenced by them, right. then you're ready for that. Mm. But if you right. don't know, if like, if you're still kind of in that like chameleon shape shifter place of right. like, yeah. their opinion of me matters more right. Very than my place. assignment in their life, then like, it may not be time yeah. for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You got to get to the point where you are unapologetically yourself in Christ. In you're gonna Christ. In, 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 uh, unapologetically yourself in Christ. Yeah, that you has gotten a lot of people in, into trouble as well. Unapologetically not yourself going, is, right, is, is in not Christ. the same thing as unapologi- unapologetically yourself in Christ. 100%. Where you are you with Christ at the center all the time, no matter who is around. Right. Yeah. right. Well, while a community is important, there is a, a, a moment where you, maybe you start to step into a lot of influence, Yeah. just as Jesus did whenever he started to reveal himself to more and more people, when he had to go back to the Father, the wilderness, he right. had to step away and have, and have that one-on-one time. And mm-hmm. that was still absolutely valuable. He, he wanted his 12, he yeah. wanted to have that fellowship, ultimately got the most out of his time with the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I heard this said, like a good rhythm for this is divert daily, mm. uh-huh. withdraw weekly, uh-huh. and abandon annually. Okay. Yeah. So like like daily, I'm going to divert to aloneness and solitude with mm-hmm. the Father. Weekly, I'm going to completely withdraw to mm-hmm. solitude, aloneness with the father, father. And then annually at some point, I need to abandon. Like I need to like, and again, not to say, abandon as in you abandon your family. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're married, you're taking your spouse with you, but we are yeah. getting away mm-hmm. for, if that m- means y'all are going to a conference together, right. you're getting alone in a cabin together, um, something like that where you are. And I'm not acting like I perfectly live this out, but right. I do think that is the goal is to divert daily, withdraw weekly, abandon annually. Yeah. Yeah. I think Can that's a, go-, go ahead. Nope. I think that's a great practical step. I like, um, I like thinking about how our walk, walk with the Lord should be it is genuine and it should be spirit led and we should be able to just break routine in a, in a moment right, with the Lord for sure. and let the spirit lead. But you're not going to fail by having these disciplines, these practical no. steps. It's going to be God honoring of you right. to say at three o'clock every day, a timer is going to go off. I'm going to pray for five minutes, yeah, whether yeah, I feel yeah. like it or not. Mm-hmm. That will honor the Lord. Oh, yeah. Well, it's the same thing as like when you come back to tithing, you yeah. know, how if you give, let's just say you do the 10 percent, you give 10 percent of your time to God. Mm-hmm. He can do so much more with your 90% than you can with your 100. Right. You know, and that, that goes with your finances, which I've had to, you know, I've had to learn like as a, a man, husband, man. Mm-hmm. you know, it goes with your time. Yeah. That goes with everything. You yep. know, you give so much time to him purposefully. Yes. Mm-hmm. And honestly, and, and then, and then Pastor Brandon said this, 
It may have been on your podcast. I can't remember. It may not have been. I can't remember where I heard hmm. him say it. But he said, you give him the best of your time. If you're not yeah, your yeah, best yeah. you in the morning, don't give that time to God. Right. There is a point of starting your day with that. And I'm not saying don't start your day without but the, prayer. The deep dive. But, yeah. but like like giving yourself to God, giving that specific time of, of yeah. the divert daily and withdraw weekly. If you're more awake and more alert and more like high energy at night, Give that time to yeah. God. Right. Go to That's him. typically when I do best. my Bible reading mm-hmm. yeah. is at night. night because I just happen to be a night owl. Yeah. And yeah. so a lot of the time when I used I, to be, then I got married. <laughs> well, you know, I like 930 now. I understand. Well, I, I say night owl. It's <laughs> it's just, yeah, about like nine o'clock. Like, 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 <laughs> 930, you know? I'm going. <laughs> yeah. I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I understand there's a difference between sacrifice and obedience. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, obedience is clearly greater and the Lord's not going to ask you to just sacrifice everything. But I would, I would encourage men. I think for men, it's great to err on the side of caution. Right. Um, one story that comes to mind is good old David and Goliath. And I can't quote it perfectly sadly right now, but I, when I remember reading it this last time and thinking about how quickly David decided he was going to take out the Philistine, Mm -hmm. there wasn't, I, and you, you would know better and hopefully you could step in on this, but I don't recall reading a moment where David stopped, went to the Lord, had a little prayer moment, no. thought about it overnight or anything. He walked into the place, s- just saw what's going on, and immediately was kind of offended for the Lord. Honestly, and like, though, are you kidding I really, me? Dude, I, I love that you're going that way, and yeah. I love the way David actually handled it because yeah. David saw what Goliath was doing, and he deferred to the experts. Yeah, He goes, is no one going to do anything about this? Like right. He's yes. deferring to the people who should be. Right. He's like, y'all have authority. Y'all mm-hmm. are the ones. It wasn't overstepping. Uh, yeah, I'm not overstepping, but like I do recognize some somebody's got to do something. Yeah. And when no one else who had the the rightful place to take on Goliath was going to do it, the humble shepherd boy says, "Well, if no one else will, I will take the authority. Right. You guys are usurping, right? Yeah, right? You guys are abandoning, um, and I'll do it. You yeah. know. But I have to love that he even deferred to the expert when when the experts were quivering in their yeah. boots. There was know? some respect right. there. There, there wasn't. Is. It wasn't. Uh, let me glorify David myself by. By getting up, yeah. There and David getting to take wasn't him out. like, "Hey, I'm the guy." He goes, he knew he could. "You guys are supposed to be the guys, right?" But when the guys who were supposed to be the guys weren't being it, he goes, "Why? Well, I, I I know who I am, so I'll I'll step yeah. up." Mm-hmm. And it was all the intentional intentional time in the fields that he had with the Lord mm-hmm. that Go made there, him. That's good. So. Yeah. You know, confident. So, yeah, confident in the Lord that going into this, I'm not going to fail, dude. We are the so, like, army how, of the Lord. Yes, a hundred percent. And how many times are we wasting time praying about the good thing you're supposed to do? Yeah, if it's hey. good and it's going to edify the Lord and it's going to edify everyone around you, and it's only going to take yourself, the people around you. But honestly, it's for the Lord. You don't have to pray about it. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to pray about going into worship. I don't have to pray about serving my wife. I don't have to go home and be like, well, I need to pray about being good to my wife. No, I'm going to be, be I'm good. Gonna be yeah. good. I'm you, not, I don't have to pray about defending someone. Yeah, I don't right. have to pray about defending the Lord. Mm-hmm. I have converse, I work in a very secular thing, very, you know, in the gym. I have conversations daily where they ask me a question and I'm not like, hold on. Okay, I'm allowed to say yeah. this. Yeah. You know, like I do have Holy Spirit and I do have discernment, but. I don't have to pray about telling you the right thing. You know, the I don't have to say or just that. common sense. You know yes. what I mean? Like common spiritual sense of like, hey, this is the absolute right thing right now. The yeah. devil would never ask me to do this. <laughs> my flesh yeah. would never, my flesh would never want to do this. Right. So it's obviously the Lord. Yeah. yeah. If you well, don't want to, but it's the right thing to do. Chances it's, are it's the right. It's called the Holy yeah. Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. believe I believe David knew, but there is that interesting aspect of he also he knew the heart of the Lord enough yes. to be like, right. I'll go to heaven and answer for this. Yeah. Like I Bro, I, yeah. I I maybe somehow right. I overstepped or whatever, but I know I know God's got me on this. Right. Hundred percent. Yeah, man, there's so many avenues I think we could go down. I think we've been filming for quite some time. Wow. And so I, I want to so make sure that we, I want to honor you y'all's time. I know, you know, you guys have families and stuff. And so uh, thank y'all so much for coming yeah. on the pod. I yeah. know, be, I don't even have to say, I hope this, this bless you. I know it bless <laughs> you. If you made it to this far into the pod, you are here. <laughs> you. I hope you point. still got hair. Okay. <laughs> proud um, long very proud of you if you made it this far <laughs> in the pod. And yeah. I just want to ask, would you share this episode? Um, specifically, if you are a man and you know, an, you know, maybe you got a small group or you know, a guy who just could really be edified by, you know, what we talked about today, take the, take a link, send it to them and, yeah. you know, really encourage them. Don't just like mindlessly send a link, say, Hey, I just got done listening to this. Um, you know, here's some things to listen for. 
send them that. Um, also, likewise, wives, if you think your husband would be edified by this, send it to him. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's hard for a man to hear the, you know, you mm-hmm. preach about how he should be and it's easier for him to listen to other men yeah. kind of be real raw. And, I, and that's what we've tried to be today mm-hmm. is yeah. really honest, like straightforward and, con- and and be led by conviction, but also try to be real when we're like, hey, I, you know, I have felt majorly convicted yeah, by this podcast yeah. today. Mm-hmm. So oh, I honor sure. each and every single one of you. I th- I'm thankful for who you are in my life. I'm thankful for who you are in the kingdom and be looking for part two because we're going to be doing this again. <laughs> Love you guys. See you in the next episode of No Counterfeit Podcast. <laughs>